Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Wednesday, December 14th, 2022. I am Allison Johnston, Professional Development Coordinator for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the Maryland Community of Practice for Supporting Families webinar. Our webinar today is Maryland's Technology Assistance Program. The session is being facilitated by Mary Ann Kane Bresci, Parent and Director of Family Supports for DBA. Lori Barong, Executive Director of the Maryland Assistive Technology Program with the Maryland Department of Disabilities is our guest. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants are in listen only mode. There are two options for listening to the webinar, a computer and phone. If you have trouble hearing, you may try switching by clicking on the appropriate box on the webinar control panel. There is one handout for the webinar and you can find it in the handout section on the panel on the right of your screen. They can also be emailed to you if you are listening by phone. We will be recording the webinar. We would like to, get, we would like to hear from you and get your feedback on today's presentation and any suggestions you may have for future topics. Please use the question or chat box to the right of the webinar panel to ask questions and provide feedback. If you have questions related to your family member's services, please contact your local regional office. Now I'd like to introduce Marianne Kane Breshi. Good morning, everyone. I mean, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Allison, are you able to bring up the PowerPoint? Yes, I'm doing it right now. Okay, terrific. Thank you. I'd like to um, welcome everyone not only to this webinar, but to this webinar series. For those of you who aren't familiar with the webinar series, the goal of this series is to bring people together in order to connect with one another and learn from each other. I'm gonna give Allison a chance to just get back to our, our beginning page. There we go, there we go. Um, Again, the purpose is to bring folks together to connect, to learn from one another, share information, and to address challenges that individuals with intellectual and de developmental disabilities and families face on a daily basis. We address these challenges with our um, guests and subject matter experts, and we always do, do this through the lens of charting the life course. Next slide, please, Allison. Charting a Life Course is a set of universal principles and tools. Its fundamental principle states that all people have the right to live, love, learn, work, and play, and pursue their aspirations in the community. It was developed out of the University of Missouri, Kansas City's Institute for Human Development Program, Institute, I'm sorry, Institute for Human Development Family to Family Program to help families and individuals create a vision for their good life. Think about what they're, they're going to need to know and do, navigate and develop resources if need be, and finally discover what it's gonna to take to live their lives of their choosing and do it. At its core, charting the life course views the person within the context of family and however defined and community. It really focuses too on the critical roles that families play in the lives of their family members in order to always in order to support them to live their best lives. Keeping the, the individual and family in mind, the goal is to support the individual to live their best life and again, support families so that they can, they can support their family to do so. Today, oh, next slide please, Allison, I'm sorry. <laughs> Today we're going, and then if you actually do it three more times, we're gonna bring up these different, and one more, there we go, all right. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Integrated Support Star. It's principle that all of us, disability or not, use a variety of resources, supports, and services to live our lives. These may include our own strengths and assets. It may also include technology, community resources, and when those that um, we need, specifically those eligibility-specific resources. When working with folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities and families, this integrated support star is a wonderful tool in that it really helps the individual and the person to, to really brainstorm around all of the resources that they have. So they might have a vision for their life. And the moment you have a vision for your life, challenges around that vision or to obtain that vision or to live that vision come up immediately. And 
the Integrated Support Star is a great tool to apply to that challenge, whatever it might be, you know, to think about, you know, so here's the challenge. What are my strengths and assets? What are the strengths and assets that the individual brings to the situation? What relationships do, does the person have, whether it's a family or even just acquaintances, right? Um, and also technology, which we're gonna talk about today, as well as community resources and eligibility specific. Technology and assistive technology, assistive technology can and often does play a critical role in the lives of our family members. It can mean the difference between the ability to communicate or not, live one's own life, live in one's home or not, without unnecessary staff. Being able to continue <clears throat> being able to i'm sorry my 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 own words don't make sense um being able to continue living in your own home um or not working or not and having transportation or not all of these things technology plays a critical role in all of them i'm so excited to have Lori with us today from the department of disability the, Mar the maryland Techn technology assistance program to share with you the services they provide to truly support individuals and families to live their best life. And so with that, I'd like to welcome Lori. Um, oh, I, I'm trying to advance my slides. Allison, can we go to the next slide, please? Lori Borong, with, um, and I'm gonna hand it over to you, Lori. Welcome, and thanks for being here today. Awesome, thank you. I'm really so excited to have a chance to um, chat with all of you. I am assuming many of you are parents, some of you might be providers, some are individuals with disabilities. And so I appreciate you taking the time and I'm gonna try and get us wrapped up by one so that um, everybody has a chance to carry on with the rest of their day. So I am Lori, thank you for listening to me chatter on for the next um, 50 minutes. And I am with the Assistive Technology Program with the state of Maryland. We fall under the Department of Disabilities. So we are a direct service program under the department. Next slide, please. So who I am, why I do what I do, I have been with the AT program um, for over 20 years now. I started right out of college um, and I didn't really know about assistive technology at the time. I had the opportunity to sort of jump into this role working around like content development. And over these years, I have sort of fallen in love with um, the impact that assistive technology has on individuals. So since then I've gone on to get a master's and then a postgraduate certification in assistive technology. I live and work um, right in Baltimore City, but we are a statewide program. So our services are all over the state. And we're gonna jump into that a little bit later and look at where you can find our libraries. Um, I also am a parent of a child with a disability. So I have a child who has nonverbal learning disabilities, um, anxiety, ADD, she has a vision impairment. And so right from the get go, I've been pretty involved as, you know, in the parent role, um, involved in the IEP process, before that the 504 process. And we're always thinking about how assistive technology can sort of support her and um, support the things that she's doing. So. Um, this is a cute, just little picture of my my crew, um, or some of my crew. So that is that is sort of the approach I take when I'm thinking about assistive technology. And one of the things that my personal experiences have led me to find is that you know there's all kinds of assistive technology out there, and it's geared to individuals with certain types of disabilities. But a lot of times, it really crosses you know, it crosses categories. So what might be developed for somebody who has a vision impairment is really going to be helpful for somebody who might have um, some processing issues. So we really delve into that and explore that when we're working with our consumers. Uh, next slide, please. So again, we are the statewide assistive technology program and we're providing equipment demonstrations, device loans, equipment reuse, financing, and training across the state. Every state and U.S. territory has an assistive technology program. And I like to say that because we're in Maryland, but if you cross over into D.C., move to D.C., or move to Virginia, any of these other states, um, you're going to find that you have an assistive technology program there too. And our core services are all the same. 
So what you get in Maryland is going to be similar to what you get somewhere else. Next slide. What is assistive technology? Some of you, probably most of you have a sense of what AT is, but we always like to talk about it a little bit. It can be really low tech. It can be those claw reachers that, um, you know, they sell. Sometimes you can find them at the dollar store, um, but it can also be really high tech stuff. It can be, um, you know, software that you put on your computer that reads everything on the screen out loud. It can be speech to text so I can talk to my computer and it, you know, writes everything out for me. Um, it can be an app that you have on your phone. It can even be smart home technology that can be considered assistive technology when used in certain capacities. So AT is really broad. Next slide. Um, so we have a little video, it's called AT Plain and Simple. And we're gonna try and bring this up so we can play it for you. And you'll have an ad for a couple seconds and then we should be able to skip that. Here you go. Oh, so we can't hear this. I think you just have to unmute yourself. Um, I think Allison, are you the one playing the video for us? Hmm. Allison? Oh. Oh. Let's see if we can get this to play. Oh, we still can't hear it, so we can skip it. You can go back to the slide deck if you can hear me. Okay, okay. so you'll get a copy of this um, slide deck and you can actually play this video on your own. Um, but assistive technology is really going to be anything that sort of builds independence for somebody, whether that's at home, in the workplace, um, at school. So really assistive technology is any type of AT that's going to do that. So what are we doing here in Maryland? How do we provide some services? So we have um, our AT demonstrations and consultations that we provide to folks. Um, we have AT clinicians on staff in our program. One is an occupational therapist and one is a special educator. And so what they do is provide customized consultations. So somebody will contact our program and say, I am in need of something or I am trying to accomplish some task. And then we will meet with them that can be either in person or virtually, whatever the preferences of that family. Um, and then we will, you know, meet with them, kind of explore different devices that could be helpful to them then we can provide more customized consultations so after, or demonstrations rather. So after we go through that exploration process, we'll say, okay, here are some devices that might be helpful. And then we'll provide those in-depth demonstrations for them. And then once that person decides on what is of most interest, what they're most um, interested in trying out, they can borrow that equipment for up to four weeks at a time. So I sometimes frame it, you know, there's the public library for books. We are the public library for assistive technology, but we have libraries all over the state. Um, and then we host a lot of assistive technology trainings. Most of those are our webinars that we host. Um, and if you're interested in sort of figuring out what those are, you can check our website. Um, in January, we have one coming up on how to build an accessible learning environment. So that's kind of geared more towards um, educators, but also parents. So if they're thinking about how do I ensure that my kid has all of the features they need in Google Classrooms or something like that, you know, um, we have that session coming up in January and we have one coming up in February that's focused on assistive technology to support the symptoms of long COVID. So we really try to cover the gamut when we're doing these webinars and trainings. Um, and again, you can find those on our website, but I will also, um, you know, put my email in the chat later. So if you have questions or you wanna sign up for our newsletter where you can get those notifications, that's fine too. Um, and then we host all kinds of AT events across the state. We host accessible gaming days. So um, folks can come together whether they have a disability or not and actually do some video game playing together. We've done that during spring break. We've done a nighttime one in the fall. Um, and it's a really awesome opportunity for folks with all kinds of 
um, disabilities, whether it's physical, developmental, um, whatever you, you know, whatever the disability might be, they can come together and video play video games together. We have all kinds of adaptive equipment available. We host every October a financial resiliency webinar series. We do this in partnership with Cash Campaign of Maryland, and it's really focused on building financial awareness and resiliency specifically for individuals with disabilities in the state of Maryland. So we really focus heavily on what is available in Maryland to support those individuals. It can be financial planning through the lifespan, it can be ABLE accounts, it will cover things like how to manage um, and conquer debt, um, it covers all kinds of things. Um, so we include all of that in this financial resiliency series and that we host every October. There's usually 16 to 20 unique topics um, that we do virtual that we host virtually. Um, so all kinds of you know things around assistive technology. Next slide, please. This is another video. We're probably going to skip it just so we don't run into the same issue but it really is a two minute commercial about like who we are what we do how people come into our library so in this video um, when you get the slide deck later you can click on the link and you'll actually see what our baltimore library looks like um, and how we interact with our consumers when they come in to make a decision um, and sort of explore the different options out there so next slide our assistive technology libraries. We are all over the state. We can, hop, we can go to the next slide. So we have nine locations. Our central Baltimore library is our largest and most robust assistive technology library. But then we are also housed in most of the centers for independent living across the state. There is a small um, demo and loan library in each one of those. We also have a space in the Arc of Northern Chesapeake and in the Howard County Loan Closet. So um, there are lots of opportunities to interact with our equipment, to try out devices. And if you are, you know, if you live in a certain area and it's not easy to get to our Baltimore library, but the Baltimore one is where we have the equipment that you need, we will ship it to you free of charge and include um, some postage paid labels so that you can send it back when you're finished. We make it super easy for folks to access that equipment. And then once somebody gets it, We'll walk them through the process virtually or over the phone on how to use it, how to set it up. Some of our more popular devices have little QR codes on them, which take you directly to a video that we've created to kind of walk you through the steps of using it. Next slide. So these are the rest of the um, libraries that we have. You will see that we do not have a space identified yet on the Eastern Shore, so we are working on that. But um, for folks who live on the shore that need access to AT, that's where we, you know, will provide the virtual services. We will ship the equipment. Um, and in some instances, we have gone out and met folks over the bridge. So um, we, were, we are working on having another defined space on the shore. But certainly, you can still utilize our services no matter where you're located in the state. Next slide. We have another video. This one I don't typically show during these sessions, but it is touring our library. It's a seven minute video that walks you through our Baltimore library and shows you all of the different areas. So when somebody comes into our space, um, they're gonna see that there are different areas set up in this library. There is um, a section on you know, independent, um, aids for independent living. So that's where you'll see a lot of our kitchen equipment there's like a monitoring state monitoring area. So that's where we have lots of our smart home technology set up. Um, communication um, devices have a whole nother area. All of our switch adapted toys have a section. So really it's it's built in by spaces and by areas so that you can sort of explore and um, experience the different types of technology that's out there. Next slide, please. There we go. So some of what you're gonna find in our library, some of what's available is what we call our AT for independent living. So on the top left-hand picture there, there is a um, electronic uh, handheld magnifier. So we're all familiar with the, the standard magnifiers that you can get at the store, but there's all kinds of other magnifiers that are out there. Some are smaller, some are bigger. 
Um, and they can do things like increase the magnification that you can't necessarily do with just a regular old magnifier. Um, you can change contrast, you can take snapshots, you can carry it with you in your bag if you're going back and forth to school or going back and forth to work. Um, so magnifiers is um, certainly an area we have a huge variety of devices. Um, next to that are some reachers. I talked about those claw reachers earlier, but there's all kinds of different reachers out there based on what you know, what is the person's need? So we have this multi-tool reacher. It has a hook on it, it has a magnet, and it has a sticky pad. So if somebody drops their keys, their cell phone, some cash, you know, it might be hard to get that with a claw reacher, but you can certainly use the multi-tool to get those things. Um, if it's difficult for you to bend or to get to a space, you know, contort your body in a certain way to get to a certain space where it's fallen. We also have um, independent eating devices. So you see a lady here eating with um, what is called our liftware or levelware. Those are different types of devices um, or utensils that are available to support folks depending on what their needs are. So if somebody has tremors, there's a certain type of device. If somebody has um, certain hand limitations, muscle spasms, or certain types of um, physical sort of contortions that make it hard to move their hand, um, there is a level wear device. We also have what's called the OB, which is a feeding robot. So for somebody who has really limited, um, perhaps quadriplegia, they can use the OB robot to independently eat. Um, so we have all of that in our library to explore. Along with that, we have things like desktop magnifiers, which are down on the bottom left corner picture. Um, and those are great. So that somebody can just kind of have that sitting on their desk at the, you know, at home um, or at work, and it actually magnifies everything. It does everything that little handheld one does, but just bigger. Um, sometimes it can read the content out loud as well. It can take a snapshot and read it out loud. So all kinds of stuff out there. And then we have some of our smart home technology as well that we explore with folks. So how can that be? Um, used to support somebody's independence in the home. And we'll explore that as well with families. Next slide. We also have AT for school and work. So there's all kinds of assistive technology out there depending on what the needs are. We have refreshable braille displays that can hook up to a laptop through Bluetooth technology. We have um, modified or adapted keyboards. You can see there's high contrast ones there. There's also ergonomic keyboards. There's one-handed keyboards. So if somebody's just typing with one hand as opposed to two, all kinds of stuff that um, we can explore with folks. Different types of computer mice is also an option. So we all have like a standard mouse or we might use a little trackpad on our um, laptop, but there's all kinds of computer mice out there that can make it a lot more easy um, on your wrist, on your arm, just, just to navigate a computer. We have all sorts of eye gaze technology available, different apps for eye devices. So we have iPhones, tablets, iPads that we can loan out to folks um, to try out different apps that are available on those that we've preloaded. So if somebody's having issues with task sequencing or needs reminders, uh, medication reminders, all of that stuff we can work through with the, you know, with the individual to sort of figure out what's going to work, and then we can loan that equipment out. Um, also, we have uh, all types of equipment for folks who are deaf and hard of hearing. So although we're not loaning out things like hearing aids, we do loan out lots of other devices. Um, this is what you see on the screen, kind of in the middle is an amplification system. It has a pair of headphones attached to it, but you can also just have a loop that connects with your hearing aids and it amplifies the sound around an individual. So if they're going out to eat with their friends or um, going to hear um, or watch a play, they can take something like this with them so they can hear it better. Um, but there are also apps that do that. So we certainly sit down and explore, like, what do you have already? What are you comfortable using? Do you need an individual device or can we find an app that's going to work or adjust the features in your smartphone so that it's most comfortable and most usable to you? So those are all things that we explore with our individuals when they're coming to our library. Next slide. 
and then AT for fun, all kinds of assistive technology out there that folks can use um, just to sort of make their days feel more meaningful and exciting. Adapted gaming equipment, um, playing cards that are large print, we have those in Braille, switch activated toys. There's all sorts of things out there to just sort of build a lot more um, engagement with one's experiences and, and life in general. So we um, take all of that into consideration when we're meeting with folks. Next slide. We're gonna skip this. We, um, we I have a, a link here and again, I, I don't think it's going to work, but um, we do a lot around adapted gaming. So we have a pretty robust gaming station in our library with different types of consoles, different switches, different um, video game controllers set up. And so over the past couple of years, we've really built up this area because we know that it is a place um, and it is a, a source of interest for a lot of folks. So we met with a young man who has muscular dystrophy who was not able to game for a couple of years because of his pro the progression of his disability. Um, and so he came in and we were actually able to set him up with some equipment. Um, and he got to try it out in our library. So we do have a short little video of him like just trying it out. And then he was able to take it and borrow it um, to see what was working for him. And so um, we always love to share those stories. Another piece of that is we do have two adapted gaming kits that we have put together. These are mobile kits. Um, so it includes some TVs, some video game stations, adapted gaming equipment, instructions, guides. And we loan those out to different organizations when they want to host events. And then we provide some additional support when they're hosting those events so they know how to set it all up, how to use it, how to um, make it really fun and engaging for um, their participants. So next slide, please. So we do our demo and loan libraries. People can borrow equipment from us, but let's talk about some other ways that they can get equipment through our program. So one way is through our reuse initiatives. There's a lot of technology out there, assistive technology, lots of equipment that people outgrow, no longer need, um, replace for whatever reason that they don't want it anymore. We try to make sure it goes into the hands of somebody that can use it. So the first way we've done that is we set up a Facebook exchange or a Facebook yard sale page. Um, if you guys are familiar with Facebook Marketplace at all, it's where people post things that they're getting rid of or um, selling. So we have a whole page dedicated to different types of equipment that people can post. Um, so you can certainly uh, request to join this Facebook page. We try to keep it specific to Maryland. Um, so we do kind of ask some questions when people are registering to join this page. Um, but what you see here, these three items, these are three things that did just get exchanged. There's all kinds of stuff on this page um, that folks are selling, folks are giving away. We've had even adapted vehicles um, get posted and purchased um, through this page. So it is pretty robust and we always encourage people to check that out. The next thing we do, so we can go to the next slide, is our high-tech assistive technology center. So we are the only state right now that has a um, very sort of specific high-tech AT reuse program or a dedicated reuse program um, for assistive technology. So as folks no longer need communication devices, video magnifiers, braille displays, any of those items, they can certainly post um, or contact us donate them to our program. Even if the stuff isn't working great, what we do is we have a team of volunteers that can um, evaluate it, refurb it, and then we make it available to consumers who cannot afford that equipment otherwise. So um, we have a couple of um, volunteer teams, but we use their expertise to help us get it kind of up and running. Um, we have gotten iPads, laptops, all kinds of things. There is a link in the slide deck. So when you do get this, you'll be able to click on that link and it'll show you all of the items that we have currently um, that are available for folks to access. And then when somebody is in need of something, they connect with us. There is an application on our website. Um, and once they submit that application, we will connect with them and we will sort of evaluate like, what are your needs? What can you 
what can you do? And we try to make sure that they are fitted with the most appropriate device available. Um, so that is another way to access AT. Next slide. We also partner pretty closely with a couple of other um, agencies and organizations. So the Department of Aging has an equipment reuse program as well. They do not do the assistive technology like we do, but they take lots of durable medical equipment. So um, standard wheelchairs, very high, highly customized wheelchairs, um, all kinds of equipment are taken in by the durable medical equipment program through the Department of Aging. Um, anybody can take advantage of that. There is no age limit or um, minimum, so you do not need to be a senior to take advantage of this program. They have lots of pediatric equipment as well, so they take in pediatric items um, and make that available. They do have their own application process. I believe they do require that you demonstrate that um, you cannot have it covered through insurance. Um, but that, you know, certainly is an option for a lot of folks out there. And then we have on our website a loan closet directory. So throughout the state, there are lots of little organizations, usually specific to counties or zip codes, where they take in equipment that people in that community no longer need, and then they provide it back out to residents of that community. So again, lots of ways to access uh, assistive technology and durable medical equipment. Next slide. We also partner with two additional um, organizations, Lollipop Kids Foundation and Equipment Connections, who do the same reuse work, um, but it's really specific to equipment for children. And they do include lots of items that are not, in co not covered by insurance. So as children get bigger, um, outgrow certain things, gate trainers, strollers, um, all types of car seats, they get donated to these equipment to these um, organizations, and then those organizations connect with families and provide it back out for free. So we do a lot of partnership with them as well. Next slide. So we're talking a little bit about tech first as well. So technology first is a new initiative in the state, and it's really spearheaded by the DDA. Um, the Maryland Department of Disabilities and our program, the AT program, have sort of provided a lot of input and um, collaboration on this initiative, but it's really to make sure that Marylanders with disabilities are considering technology as a first solution to maintaining that independence. Um, so that could be using technology to support getting back and forth to um, to work, or it might be just to kind of go out and visit with friends. It's really how do you build technology into your everyday life, like just all the things that you might be doing to really support independence. And so DDA has taken the lead on this, but um, you know we as a technology program are going to provide some supports around it. So technology first is was officially launched. We can go to the next slide um, in August. I think it was August 15th, um, it was officially proclaimed that we are a technology first state. And it's really about like ensuring that assistive technology or general technology is built into whatever processes, whatever services that individual with disabilities is um, coming into contact with to make sure that there's technology as an option for them. We can go to the next slide. So Stephanie Jones is the Director of Innovation with the DDA, and she is really sort of the spearhead for um, implementing technology first and what that looks like, um, particularly for clients of the DDA. Um, but technology first applies to anybody and everybody, really. It's, it's, not, um, it's not just that you have to be a DDA client to benefit from technology first, but we know that this is DDA's commitment to ensuring that technology is always considered as the first option for consumers. Next slide. So if you are um, working with young adults who are receiving DDA services and they're going through that transition process from school into community living, independent living, there's a lot of um, supports out there. DDA does have a page on transitioning youth and how technology is sort of built into that transition process. 
So as those kids transition away from the school system and not having their school provided assistive technology, um, really this is a chance to connect and sort of build those bridges with your DDA case manager, with doors, if they're utilizing door services, with an IEP team, with your providers, your CCSs, to really figure out like how do we ensure that this that my my person has the tech that they need to do whatever it is that they're moving forward to do in life. Um, next slide, please. So just a couple things when we're thinking about technology first and we're thinking about um, how technology plays a role in our lives. Um, you know, setting your goals. What is it that you want to do? Do you want to go to college? Do you want to go get a job? Do you want to live on your own? Is it a little bit more um, narrowed down? Is it that I want to be able to cook my own food or I want to take the bus on my own? Um, I want to be able to go visit my best friend who lives, you know, 10 minutes away. How do I do that? So set those goals first. Once we know what those goals are, we can start to figure out what technology is out there to support that. There's all sorts of things available for each of these. Um, if it's taking the bus, let's talk about some GPS systems, some wayfinding technology, some mapping technology that's going to help somebody really independently get from point A to point B. If it is living independently, we want to figure out what does that mean? What does living independently mean to you? Is it that you are going to be able to answer the door um, and feel safe to cook your own food on your own? All of those things. So that's where we really start with what are the goals? Next slide. And then building your network. So building your network is integral when we're thinking about technology and how it's going to support somebody. So who is going to be there to work with you on making sure that you not only have the technology, but that you know how to use it, that you feel comfortable using it, that if there's a problem, you can reach out to somebody. So you wanna make sure in your network, you've thought about those different folks that might be family, it might be friends, it might be your service providers, um, but that team is really going to help you with figuring out from point A, getting it, to, to the end use of that technology day in and day out. Next slide. And then step three is really advocating and implementing those solutions. So you're working with your network, you're figuring out your goals. Um, you want to figure out what the goal is, the, the technology goal to support your main goals. Um, you want to figure out how do I how do I use this? Do I need a lot of support to use it, or can I kind of do this on my own mostly? Um, you want to make sure that your network understands how to use the equipment. So it's not just it's not just the individual with a disability that has to figure out how to use this equipment. We need to get everybody familiar with it um, so that there is a support system in place. Um, and then creating a backup plan is something. If the internet goes down, what do you do? Um, if you're out of service somewhere, what do you do? Um, so you kind of come up with a backup plan in those instances and make sure that you've got some additional resources in place. But that's really sort of the implementation process for technology when you're thinking about technology first in the broad scheme of things, like how are we implementing it? Um, and so we just like to have that in here because it really does give people a guide to the process. Next slide, please. And then funding assistive technology. We can go to the next slide. Through our programs, through the Maryland AT program, we have a couple of resources. Um, one is our low interest financial loan program. So if somebody wants to purchase assistive technology, that can be home modifications, vehicles, computers, hearing aids, any of those stuff. Um, if you want to purchase it, you can certainly take advantage of our low interest financial loan program. So right now our interest rates are actually at 3%, um, which is significant given the current prime rate. Um, and we can issue loans anywhere from $500 up to $70,000. And usually, I mean, that 70,000 is reserved for like adopted vehicles, but um, you know, there is a, a broad spectrum there and it, we cover all kinds of things so somebody can certainly reach out to us about financing their equipment next slide uh, we run a specialized program called iDrive maryland which is really about providing um, super low interest rates 
expanded um, loan amounts and expanded repayment terms for vehicles, both adapted and non-adapted. And that again is for building independence and ensuring that people have access to transportation because transportation, whether it's by having your own vehicle or by navigating public transit, whatever it is, is going to create a lot more independence for somebody and open up a lot more opportunity, whether that's just to you know, increase quality of life by visiting with family and friends or going to work or going taking classes somewhere. Um, so transportation is really vital. Next slide. And again, with our loans, uh, we cover all kinds of things. So if somebody is going to apply through our program for assistive technology, um, again, it's home modifications, vehicles, it can be adapted gaming systems, it can be adapted bikes, it can be communication devices, if that's not covered through insurance for them, hearing aids, braille equipment, smart home technology. It's really broad. If you can make the case that it's to support um, a disability, then we can you know, consider that as assistive technology. Next slide. We also run a portable ramp project. So this is where we have a wide variety of portable ramps housed at six of the centers for independent living across the state. And these are made available typically for about four months at a time. So if somebody needs a portable ramp to get in and out of the house, uh, maybe they're leaving a nursing facility or they are um, leaving the hospital because they had surgery, they're temporarily using a wheelchair, they can reach out and access one of these portable ramps. It's a free program. Um, portable ramps, I will say, do not cover everybody's front steps. If you live in a home where you have like eight steps to get into your house, that portable ramp is not going to work for you there. But we will come up with other solutions and brainstorm to see what we can um, identify. And then if somebody is borrowing this ramp and they realize they need something more long-term, between our program and the Center for Independent Living, we start exploring long-term solutions to figure out what's going to be most helpful to that family. Next slide. We also partner with an or a, a company, um, AT Discount Sales and Services. They negotiate discounted interest or discounted rates on assistive technology. So typically what they do is they'll work with a school system and do a lot of bulk purchasing. But then if somebody needs that particular device, they're going to pass that discount on. So um, if we are working with a client and they're interested in purchasing something we're going to say check with at discount sales to see if they've already got a negotiated discount rate on that equipment and they have all kinds of um, partnerships with vendors across the state outside of the country so they are a great resource to figure out if you can get a discounted rate on that equipment next slide please we also um, partner with sort of our sister program, Maryland Accessible Telecommunications. So if you're not familiar with what's known as MAT, they provide adapted telephones to folks, anyone um, of the age three and up. Um, and they provide, ad it's adapted telephones to support folks with hearing loss, vision loss, physical disabilities, intellectual or developmental disabilities. And in most instances, they will provide a free assessment, they will purchase the equipment, and they will install it for the client. Um, they serve the entire state. Um, they do have a few mandates in terms of what you have to, you have to meet a, a couple of things in order to qualify, but a lot of folks do qualify. Um, so they are a great resource as well. And they do provide both landline and cell phones for folks. Next slide. So there's other funding resources out there for assistive technology. We talked about technology first, and obviously most of you who are on this webinar today are probably clients of the DDA. So being a client of the DDA, there's a very good chance you are going to be able to benefit from some of the waiver programs out there. Um, and assistive technology is covered in those waivers. Um, home modifications are covered. Uh, adapted vehicles or vehicle adaptations are covered in the waivers. So I encourage you to explore that with your um, with your agent, your provider agencies. Kind of figure out like how do I piece together funding for what we need. Um, there's also small assistive technology grants that are provided through the Centers for Independent Living. 
And then there's also LIST funding, low intensity support services. That's usually lottery based. So it's not a guarantee, but um, certainly there are lots of ways to sort of piece together that funding for the equipment that you are in need of. Next slide. And then you can kind of find us all over the place. We have a blog, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube account. We did have a TikTok account, but we did just need to take that down. Um, but you can find us all over social media. Um, and there's tons of assistive technology information out there. And we are always um, trying to share resources, trying to share updates. Um, you can find most of that on our Facebook page because that's where most of our immediate um, announcements go. But if you visit our YouTube channel, you'll find all kinds of past webinars that we've done, trainings that we've done, and it is sort of a breadth of information on our YouTube channel as well. And you can go to the next slide, which should have my contact or our contact information. There we go. So if you are interested, you can always email us with questions. Um, our general email account is here. It's mdtap.general at maryland.gov. So you can always email us with questions and um, either myself or other staff will get back in touch with you. And with that, I am happy to answer any questions that might be coming up. Lori, I think Thank we you, Lori. Go ahead. Yeah, we, did, we definitely got some questions in the chat, so that's fantastic. Um, the first one is, what is the protocol for equipment that may get damaged during the four-week loan process? Good question. So we do have um, all of the folks that do borrow equipment, they have to sign a loaner agreement. If it is damaged, we do ask that they replace it, whether it's by replacing the cost of it or actually purchasing the device. Um, there is a, a form that they do have to sign sort of taking ownership of it for those four weeks. We have gotten some things back with like minor dings or, you know, something that isn't quite working, right? We're able to usually repair that ourselves. But if it's like it's broken, we had an instance where um, somebody actually dropped the device in the inner harbor. Um, so in those instances, they do have to replace it um, and they do sign a waiver for that. Great. The next question is, does a person need to be referred to you by a CCS, a social worker, or other health professional, or can they just call you directly? They can call us directly. So we're serving all age ranges, all disabilities. Um, so there is no requirement for referrals to use our program. Perfect. Okay, perfect. And the last one so far is how do we find out about the gaming days? Where do we get that information? So that is going to be mostly through our newsletter and our email announcements. Um, we just had our fall one at the end of September. So we'll probably do another one in the spring. Um, I would say, you know, you can email our general account and I can get you signed up for our newsletter. You can also do that right from the Department of Disabilities homepage. So on the Maryland Department of Disabilities homepage, there is a link on the right hand side for, you know, request our newsletter, sign up for our newsletter. And when you do that, you'll see that there are a couple under the department. Our Maryland AT program is one of those options. So you can do it from that place as well. But if it's easier, you can just shoot us an email and I can sign you up. Okay, perfect. I think that's all the questions that were in the chat. Okay, great, Dendi. And Lori, I, I just can't thank you enough. I, it, this is just such an incredible resource and it's such an important resource. And it's funny when you brought up the lollipop kids, we've utilized them. Um, my daughter who requires a stander, um, of course, Medicaid will only pay for one, but for her to also have it in a day program or at school, well, not at school, this was a day program, we were able to get one through um, lollipop kids. So we had both because she does, she needs to stand both at home and, and um, where she is. So it, it truly is a tremendous resource. I also, if I can put a plug in for, um, and you've said this over and over again, that you, you do, you serve all ages, but um, when we talk about folks thinking about whether they wanna go to college or um, work, so forth and so on, what I wanna throw out to those families caring for younger children, Another vision might be, how do you want your son or daughter? What's the vision for them to be able to play with other kids in the neighborhood? You know, maybe, you know, interact virtually or um, be able to go sledding, I, you know, whatever it might be. So 
you know, for those folks too, caring for younger kids, there are all kinds of visions and assistive technology can certainly support your son or daughter in, 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 in and throughout their lives. So that's the little plug I'd like to make. So, so with that, we'll bring the, thank you, Lori, and um, we'll bring our webinar to a close. I do have, um, Allison, if you could take us to the next slide. Oh, one more. There's my contact information. If you want to reach out to me, please do. But then do we have one last slide? We don't have one last slide. Well, there it is. Yes. I want to invite you to join us on January 11th. Our, we will be um, joined by um, Amy from the University of Maryland's TERP Succeed program. So this is the college program um, for young men and men and women. Um, with intellectual and developmental disabilities who have the opportunity to attend school at, on campus at University of Maryland proper. Gonna, she's going to share with us um, all that they're doing, and we're going to hear from a young man who's about to graduate, and we're going to hear from one of their, their mentors, uh, another student who supports not just him, but others through this program. So really excited to be doing that in January. So with that, thank you, Lori, thank you again, and Dendi and Allison, thank you, and Everyone have a happy holiday season. Bye-bye.